Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're going to be back on the Montport Mega today. So basically every time I've got on here and turned on uh, the software it wants an update. So we've uh, done two updates since I've actually done any filming. And it is now on version 1.3.1. And I believe there was also an update for the laser when you went to 1.3.0. So uh, that's good news though because that means Monport's updating it uh, pretty consistently with what um, hopefully are fixing some of the bugs we've seen. Trying to start kind of learning this software. It's got a lot that it can do. Um, first and foremost, uh, you can zoom in and out. That's on the wheel on the mouse. Um, and it looks like it'll zoom in where your mouse is at. So if you're in the wrong spot, you can do that. That's similar to some other softwares I've used. But you can also click your wheel, the fourth mouse button, or third, depending on your mouse, but your wheel and then you can move it around wherever you want and uh, you can do that for clicking and then the hand does the same thing so you could come up here and do that it's just a quick cut for the mouse uh, you can import pictures but that one this one is straight text uh, changing the fonts a little weird I believe it's down in files and preferences and then you can get down to editor and you can start picking out your default font. So, not the easiest way to find font, but you can do it there. If there's a better way, please let me know. Put a couple letters in there. Can we right click it? Doesn't look like anything. Yeah, I don't know how to do it. Maybe over here. Oh, here we go. Okay, so on the letters that you have, you can come up to text, and it looks like you can now change your font here. That's really cool. Sweet. So that's an easy way to change your font. Very nice. Uh, over in the, there's no selection now, but anytime if you put a picture here, you can go up there and look at it, which I'll show. Uh, this next button is elements, and it's got like pre-built graphics uh, of all kinds of stuff. So there's a lot of things in there you could put in. We'll probably grab something like this and do a test. Let's look at a pig. Oh, it puts it up here. You can move it down. Boom. You got a pig. And you can come up to path and you can make edits on the path. Delete that. Oh, there's all your points. Very nice. And I mean the rest of it, you make shapes. You got your square, your circle. See what that's a pentagon. So you make different shapes straight lines this is a pin uh, this is an AI I'll show in a second uh, this is batch filing so if you put one up you can do a batch of a lot of them um, in fact let's see what that looks like with a pig again or no let's just grab a star so we've got a star now we can batch it and hit fill and that did a weird job but you can see that it did a few. I think if you've got individual uh, pieces in here, coasters or something, uh, it'll fill them all or it should fill them all. Probably a little bit of testing to do on that. And then more debugging tools, LED, which is very bright. So turning it down, figure out what you need to do in yours to actually see the wood. Yeah, that makes it a little easier for me to see. That's starting to wash that out and the grain's hard to see. So really, I'm going to leave mine on one. It's right here. This button right here closes it. So now it's closed again. And AI, very cool. You can do image to image AI. You can do text to image. Um, so we can just type out, uh, let's say, dragon and generate. So this isn't very specific. The more words you use, the more specific it's going to be, but let's see what happens. There we go. We see previews. It's got four different ones. Aaron wants to know what Dragon Tree will do, so we're going to do that and see what it shows.
Let's see. Oh, yeah. Dragon with the tree in the background. A dragon. It looks weird. A dragon with no no wings and a tree around it. <laughs> this one looks like it's got a wing coming out of its head on each side. And wings in the back. So, I mean, typical AI. Uh, you just have to use more and more words to get a better, better picture. But let's just grab one of these and import it to Canvas. And then now we've got it right there. And we can size it down. You can size it up. I'm gonna make it kind of small. And then what you can do is when you're clicked on that, now this says image. So we can look at the image. You can size it, you can move it, you can do gradient, non-gradient, right? So now it's just hard black and white. Doesn't look the best. Replacing image, image editor, lots of different things we can do here. So let's uh, take a look at a few and see what uh, we find. Okay, so this one looks like uh, just making it fuzzy. What's the wand do? Oh, the wand can delete some of the uh, background. So we could probably erase. Yep, we can just erase the background. That's probably a crop. Yep. Huh. You can crop and keep or crop and delete. Okay. So that one's cool. I'm going to cancel that. We don't want any of that. Uh, let's see. Okay. So here's different algorithms. And we can look. This is going to be dithering it. So this would be like doing any of the uh, image processing within Lightburn. So we're going to have to play with these and see which one ends up looking the best. I don't see any options on changing DPI yet. So that might be built in that it's just auto doing that. Uh, it looks like uh, all we'd have to do is eight times of the same picture to figure out which one looks the best. And then I would probably stick with that one. I think Jarvis tends to look pretty good. Uh, Stucco has looked good. Uh, I did a lot of my video editing outside and brought it in and just did pass through. So they may be something we've got to figure out as well. I'm going to grab Stucco. Uh, Stucky, sorry, and uh, I'm gonna grab that one for now, and we'll see what that looks like. Let's see, model parameter, nothing in there that gives us anything. Let's see, let's replace image. Nope, don't want to do that. Uh, so those are those big main ones. You could do a trace if it was an image you're bringing in. So it looks like full editing that you can do. You could invert. Okay. So I'm going to stick with that. So it's going to, instead of burning the background, we're going to we're gonna try to just burn the dragon and see how that looks. Uh, let's see what's array do. Nah, it's changing image sizing. Outline's going to do exactly what it says in outline. That actually looks like some pretty good settings. So we'll go back to layers. And then here, so we need the thickness. Uh, and this is built in after we did our processing. So the laser is actually moving over and measuring it. So that, um, it auto does it. That's how you actually set the, the focus. Uh, and it's processing it. Measurement successful. Three millimeters, great. Uh, the material we're using is three millimeters. Um, Power, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it fairly low for now. Let's just do uh, 20. And because we're just wanting to do um, just a color on it, we don't actually want to burn down in. We just want to do the uh, top layer, so we don't want to do a, a deep burn. I'm going to set it as fast as I can, which is uh, 600 millimeters a second for now. Uh, it's just up in the top left. And... We're going to hit go. Select your image before you hit go. I didn't have it selected. So what it ends up doing is saying I can't do anything, right? So there's nothing there. Selecting my image changes this to image. And then we hit go.
right, that took five minutes. Uh, it's definitely burning right. The picture looks somewhat like this, so grayscaling I'll have to figure out. And power, of course, will need more testing. I'm going to put it back in here, though. Man, those fans are crazy. I had to set up an exhaust specifically for it because the fans pump so hard and so fast that, like, the garage was full of smoke. It's going to take a lot more practice probably to get a really good picture and really good uh, grayscaling on that. Um, I just wanted to make sure that it's actually working. And in this video, I also want to make sure that it'll cut. So let's see if we can get it to cut. All right, polygon, five sides. It looks like you can edit the sides here. Let's see. Ah, cool. So you can change your size here. You could probably do it as a fill, but since we actually want to do an outline, we are going to do the outline. Looks like you can do an offset. You can convert to path. Uh, simplify. There's lots of things here that we're going to have to figure out. But what I want to do is I'm going to turn the speed or the power up. Let's go 70. And speed way down. Like way down. Let's do like. Let's just do 35. We could pull up the parameter panel, but we don't want to. Um, it is three millimeter line. I'm gonna measure this side. When I changed it to the right board, it auto set it on 30 and 25. Um, not really sure why. I'm gonna turn it back up, but I'll leave it at the same speed. Uh, and let's see if it'll cut through. We'll do one pass and see what it does. All right, waited for the fans to stop. It does have an automatic set timeout. I'm not sure if it cut through. It went really fast. Uh, it's pretty close because it's popping. I feel it moving. Let's see. Yeah, wow, wow. And that is, oh, uh, so it looks like there was a little piece there and a little piece there that didn't fully cut through. That's really, really good that was one pass 25 millimeters a second and it's 70 percent power and it cut through this is a three millimeter um board that came with it for the testing and uh that's better than any other laser we've had as far as cutting through uh with extreme ease so that's really good uh, it did leave some scorch marks on it so i mean you might even be able to turn it down and just do a couple other passes it was also under a minute uh, from full hitting go, which means it does all the homing, adjusts for the uh, autofocus, and then moves back over, cut it out, minute. Uh, and it looks great. Edges look really good. Like I said, just one uh, little spot there in one of the corners wasn't perfect. Other than that, it cut great. All right, uh, now that uh, we've kind of got past the problems with the machine as far as getting it hooked up consistently on that, getting it there I did have a major problem with the computer um, I was using this for the Wi-Fi on it um, and I ended up doing some speed tests and it was really really bad so I went ahead and I ran an Ethernet cable from uh, inside all the way up to this computer and that helped with a lot of the disconnects that I was having um, after we did get this on Wi-Fi because it was still disconnecting from the computer and that was the computer's fault um, so fixing that they've been staying much much more consistent after these uh, last couple updates and the machines not just randomly dropping connection or it's it's really it seemed like the machine but it's the computer dropping connection now that it's up and running and not dropping um, it's actually really nice to work with uh, it's still gonna take a bunch to learn this particular software um, if I could use it with Lightburn, I'd probably use it with Lightburn, but the camera doesn't work and I don't know how to focus in it. Um, I have passed that um, comment on to Monport. We'll see what they do. Um, so it's kind of reminding me of what I've read about Glowforges, where you have to be on Wi-Fi, you have to use their software. Um, the good thing is you can import SVGs, so you could build... Um, your cutouts and everything in a different program and import it in a lot of people do that so there are ways around it to make this software work um, 
definitely going to have to dial in uh, the grayscaling and figuring out exactly how and what looks best for pictures. That cut was super smooth, excited about that first try, guessing settings, and it looks that good. Um, definitely going to have to try to cut something out like we did on the other one and see how that turns out, but I'm really liking this machine so far um, after the updates they've done to the software, but it, it was a lot of frustration getting to that point, but I'm glad we're here now. So yeah, if there's anything you want to see software or machine-wise, please uh, just reach out and let me know. Just like to thank you guys for coming and watching and hanging in while we were getting it working, and uh, we'll see you next time.